Dr. Robert Moog died at the weekend, aged 71. You'll know him for his invention, named after him, but known as the Moog synthesizer, which transformed music. In the late 60s, his invention produced the first electronic music. In 1968, Wendy Carlos's award-winning album, Switched on Bark, made electronic music popular. that moog synthesizing was picked up by the doors the beatles the grateful dead you name it and although since then computers have been brought into music making the moog synthesizer is still widely used here's a taste of jean-jacques perry's 1996 album moog indigo Keith Emerson was in the 70s group Emerson, Lake and Palmer. He joins us on the line from Brighton. Howard Jones was famous in the 1980s for his one-man synthesizer set. And he's also on the line. Good morning to you both. Uh, good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Howard. Uh, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Keith Emerson, tell us, tell us, when you first heard, did you first hear the Moog synthesizer in that Wendy Carlos album? Oh yes, it was. Uh, I, I was intrigued by it, uh, not only by the sound, but by what it looked like. It uh, looked very much like a telephone switchboard, and I managed to come across one in London, which belonged to a guy called Mike Vickers, and I actually loaned it for a concert. Y you have to understand that these instruments weren't designed; they weren't made to be. Uh, used in live performance they were actually intended by Robert to um, be used in a studio mm. but you but you uh, you actually toured with Dr. Moog didn't you uh, Moog, yeah, should I say Moog yes yeah. <laughs> thank you <laughs> uh, yeah I, I did I actually got to know him very well and um, I worked with him very closely throughout his um, produc production models such as the Mini Moog and uh, probably as Howard knows, you know, I mean, he, uh, he went on to, I, I think, uh, yes, Bob did get into the polyphonic keyboard side of things, but after that, the, the company sort of went in a different direction. Okay, you, yeah, you're in danger of losing somebody like me. Howard Jones, mm. of course, in the 80s, by then, mm. had been around a lot, but you, you, you sort of, you were, I suppose, famous for your one-man synthesizer sets, weren't you? Um, yes, um, yes, that's right. I mean, that's the that's the great legacy that that, that, that you know that Bob um, gave us is this whole class of musical instruments, basically that you could, you know, you could you could manipulate uh, sound at its fundamental levels and create new sounds that people had never heard before. I mean, I, I saw, saw Keith play at the um, Art Wright Festival in 1970 when I was 14, and, and with his huge wardrobe moog synthesizer <laughs> and it was and it was that which absolutely inspired me to you know to get to get involved and and then to create you know to create my own music using electronic instruments of course by the time you came along it was a little tiny little desk thing wasn't it yes that's right i mean um, i you know the um the first synthesizer that i bought was like 250 quid and and it was the first time that it had been affordable but it was all the work that you know Bob Moog had done bringing the great wardrobe size synth that Keith played, you know, um, down to down to a small size so I could take it out and do a one man show. Do you now has it been completely replaced by by computers by digital music? I mean, would you now completely use digital music? Uh, well, I I um. I, I still use some of my old, you know, my old keyboards that I, I had from those days. But now, it's great new software has been written which replicates, you know, these these amazing old, old, old Moogs and and old synthesizers that that can be available, you know, as software. So we use that a lot as well in conjunction with the old stuff. Uh, Keith Emerson, tell us about the man because it seems a bizarre combination. When you look at him, he looked very much like an inventor, and there he was working with you, sort of seventies seventies supergroups. Uh, you're referring to Bob, yeah. Yes. Um, actually, yes, it, but he wasn't at all like uh, the rocket scientist that he was made out to be. Uh, Bob had a wonderful sense of humour, and I think he was actually completely bemused seeing his creation used on stage. It was... Um, uh, I did a 
concert in New York last year celebrating 50 years of the synthesizer and uh, other artists like um, Rick Wakeman were there and we were all uh, all playing his instrument and I think Bob was completely amazed that we were still using it. You know? how, how would you describe is it, the influence of, of the Moog synthesizer on, on music generally? Uh, myself, yeah. uh, well, I think it uh, for me it, it defined what we know today as pr progressive music. Uh, it was a, a, certainly a gift um, because, as Howard probably knows, it wasn't easy to get your keyboard sounds to uh, be above a guitar player. Uh -huh. But once you have one of these huge monstrosities, uh, <laughs> you know, you get guitarists going, oh my God, he's got one of them. You know, we better turn it up to a number 11 or something. Yeah. Keith Emerson, <laughs> Howard Jones, thank you both.